Welcome to my year of vintage shopping recap and review. Here's almost everything I looked at this past year while vintage shopping at estate sales, flea markets, vintage markets, and vintage malls. So for 2023, I had a wish list that included the following. Number one, furniture of all kinds. I was on the hunt for dressers, a credenza, end tables, plant stands, and all sorts of storage cabinets. Number two, cool, unique bookends. Number three, vintage scrapbooks. Number four, a handful of what I call vessel anchor pieces. A brass tray for my coffee table, a vintage decorative trash can for my workspace, and a little ceramic jar to hold little mini spoons. And then number six, of course, I'm always on the lookout for vintage ephemera. My first vintage shopping excursion for the year was at a vintage mall, and I was determined to get going on this list. I already had my eye focused on the vintage and antique scrapbooks. The vintage hunting picked up in February. I went to my first estate sale of the year and a couple of vintage malls. One was in Boise, the Antique World Mall. It had been closed for a while, so I was happy that the weekend I was there, it had just reopened. I have two favorite booths that are full of ephemera. I even scored one thing that I regretted leaving behind from my previous trip. This was the start of my timid dance around secondhand furniture. I really regret not giving more consideration to these end tables. I also really loved this green artist table, although it wasn't really a piece I needed. It was just so cool, and I always have to look at anything green. In March, there was a great estate sale that I stood in line for two hours for, which I don't like to do that often anymore but it promised a ton of vintage ephemera, and it delivered. This estate sale was a whirlwind. The house was small, and it was jam-packed with stuff and a lot of shoppers, so I did my best. This was probably the best stash of ephemera I have found ever, let alone just this year. Here's a closer look at a few things I picked up. Should I attempt to rip that off? Ah, I'm scared. Ah. Oh. Well, that one was super easy. That was luck. I mean, that was, I don't think any, any of these others are as loose. Maybe this one. Anyway, I thought that was a great find. Super happy about that. By the end of March, I felt I was doing really well for finding vintage ephemera.
Going further into the spring season when estate sales really pick up, I started finding vintage scrapbooks that were more in line with the type of ephemera I was looking for, and of course, more in line with my budget. I went to another estate sale that was as overwhelming as the one in March, but for different reasons. The house was huge and also filled to the brim, but the layout was so unusual. There were rooms separated by color themes and items. There was a sunflower room, a pink room, a purple room, flowers and art and paintings everywhere. It was quite the sight to behold. I came away with lots of floral items and a bunch of painted wood flowers, which rounded out my small collection that I had started searching for in 2022. This was the unexpected kind of estate sale where there is so much good stuff that it's just all a blur. There weren't too many photos in the listing, so you couldn't tell how sparse or full it was going to be. You just had to show up. I wished I would have been more prepared for it, though and I definitely wish I would have bought at least one of these paintings, but hey, I have these photos to look back on with regret. I've also been quietly coveting vintage quilts and rugs, and at this sale I was really considering this one quilt, but I froze up mostly because I felt like someone was behind me waiting to look at them and I was being too indecisive in that moment. The rest of spring and early summer were a bit quiet on the vintage shopping front, although I did go to a few sales and stores. One thing I wanted to do this year was to check out more yard sales. So I went to a few neighborhood yard sales and came away with some fun scores. My favorite was finding this decorative trash can. I needed one for my little studio space and knew that I'd find one secondhand at some point. And this was only a dollar and it was exactly what I had in mind. There was an estate sale I almost didn't go to because it was the final sale day and I thought it would be so picked over and that the things I wanted from the listing photos would surely be gone. Another lesson I learned over and over, just go to the sale. Even if it's the second day or the last day, you just never know what you'll find. And I scored big at the sale. 
It was probably the second best ephemera stash I ended up with this year. And not only did I find the little vintage booklet that I had spied in a listing photo, That's awesome. but there was a whole collection of them. The rest of the summer was a bit quiet. I went to a couple of estate sales and continued hunting for vintage ephemera. I was in Los Angeles for a week and went vintage shopping in the famous Old Town Circle in Orange County, which didn't yield any great finds. Back in Oregon, I went to a couple of vintage malls and my obsession with cast iron doorstops grew. I went to the coast for a mini weekend getaway and did some shopping at the Rusty Cow in Cloverdale, Oregon. I found one of my favorite pieces of the year, a Lint Stymized Colorways Sugar Bowl. This brand has been on my list for a couple of years now and I've never seen it out in the wild until this year. In late August, on one of my many trips to the vintage mall, I chanced upon a vintage scrapbook. Couldn't believe my luck when I walked into that booth. It was $12. What a great price. I also finally made the drive to Aurora, Oregon, which is a charming town just south of Portland, and it's well known for all of its vintage and antique stores. I specifically wanted to go to Three Daisies Vintage to look at a vendor booth that was going to close because I'd spied a sideboard cabinet that looked very promising. Alas, it wasn't quite what I had in mind, but I'm so glad I saw it in person and didn't have to wonder anymore if it was the one. But I again made the mistake of leaving something else behind because the price was just a bit more than what I had hoped. I spied a stack of scrapbooks the moment I walked into the store, but was too shy to ask about them until the end. The owners were so sweet and graciously got them all out for me to peruse. The scrapbook that seemed to be full of ephemera and interesting pieces was $38. 
I suppose from just scoring one for $12, that was a bit of a sticker shock. And I felt pressed for time and I couldn't decide, so I left it behind. And then it was on my mind for the next five weeks. I'm kind of, stop. I'm into door stops. I, I don't know if you've noticed. Remember that scrapbook at Three Daisies I mentioned? I finally called the store one sunny Saturday after leaving a somewhat lackluster estate sale, and I asked if the scrapbook was still there. The owner instantly knew which one I was talking about, and it was still there. She put it on hold for me, and I went to get it. Early autumn, there is a surge of vintage market activity, and I was determined to go to a couple of them. There was a random one I learned about just a couple of days before it opened. It was specifically a vintage ephemera market, and it was quite small, but I found some great items, and I was also blown away by the free gifts the vendors gave to me. It was so kind and generous. I met my mom in Salem to go to the great junk hunt. There wasn't as much vintage as I was expecting, but I was so happy to check it out for the first time and to be shopping there with my mom. The very next morning, I went to the final day of the Rose City Vintage Market at the Expo Center in Portland. Always a fun show to check out.
that one booth, this giant tub of ephemera was disappointingly marked as a lot for sale, not by the piece. I would have probably spent an hour digging through it and picking out a ton of single pieces. I looked through it just to see the types of pieces that were included. It was a good bunch of stuff. To round out the autumn season, I went to the Northwest's largest garage sale and vintage sale at the Clark County Fairgrounds. There are two shows a year, and this was the first time I've gone to it. It is massive. I was strictly on the hunt for vintage ephemera and came away with a few fun items. I saw several scrapbooks, but decided not to buy any of them for various reasons. I was very excited to see this bag of Victorian die cuts and scraps. Looked like such a great assortment for $25. But now I wonder if the smaller bags were supposed to be taken out of the larger bag, hence this other small bag also marked $25. But either way, I conducted a sniff test and it was just too musty. Into the holiday season, the last estate sale I went to for the year was on a sunny day at a beautiful house with gorgeous views. But the only thing I ended up finding was a big box of old Christmas cards. From what I can tell, they're mostly from the 1980s, but there seem to be a few 50s and 60s cards mixed in. It'll be fun to sort through this. By late November and early December, I was on the hunt for Christmas decorations. I had some really good luck and I love everything I found.
Did I find everything on my top priority wish list this year? No, which isn't too surprising, but I thought some of the items would be so easy. Like a brass tray? I feel like I see those all the time, but now that I actually want one, I didn't find any. Same for bookends. I see them all the time at estate sales and vintage malls, but they are never quite the style I want. I still thought I'd stumble upon at least one set that would work. So those two items will be on the list for 2024. And so will furniture. I'm still hunting for those big pieces. As you saw throughout the video, I'm drawn to a lot of different styles and eras. Although for me, furniture doesn't necessarily have to be vintage. I just prefer to find something secondhand. So at the same time I was looking, I was also trying to figure out my style, essentially. I've had time to learn which styles and types of wood and other materials I prefer, but now I'm getting impatient. The decision making will hopefully be easier this year. Vintage scrapbooks. The fifth and final one I found was a few days after Christmas. It was only $7 and I can't wait to take my time looking through it. I can't help but look at any scrapbook when I come across them, but I don't have the space for a collection beyond just a few. General Vintage Ephemera. I scored big this year. I just love old paper. I'll continue to fine tune my eye for more unique pieces. It's very easy to accumulate a ton of paper in a short amount of time. So I'll be more focused on having a curated selection for my personal craft projects, as well as what I choose to resell. I also found just the sort of vintage wastebasket that I had in mind, and it was only a dollar. And I found a cute little jar for my tiny spoons, and there will be a cute little video to share it coming soon. Some new discoveries this year. I mentioned vintage cast iron doorstops. I see these quite often, but I'm holding out for just the right one. I'm still obsessed with vintage quilts. I just love them. And vintage rugs. I'm really hoping to find great vintage rugs for my house this coming year. That wraps up the recap and review of my vintage shopping adventures for 2023. Thanks for watching. Here's to finding more treasures in 2024. May you find what you're looking for at the vintage market and in life too.